Welcome and thank you for joining us. Today's Select Data ICD-10 Education for Clinicians is on Chapter 14, Diseases of the Genitourinary System. I'm Elizabeth Clark. I'm the Director of Education here at Select Data. Let's get started. Information made available from this webinar should not be considered legal advice. It is for educational purposes only and does not provide all available information on the subject. Information shared is not a promise or warranty guarantee, expressed or implied, and the opinions expressed, discussions undertaken, and materials provided do not represent any official position of select data. At the conclusion of this webinar, attendees will be able to name two general differences between ICD-9 and ICD-10 documentation requirements for genital urinary system diseases, We'll be able to list documentation differences in ICD-10 for cystitis, hydronephrosis, and urethral strictures, and we'll be able to list documentation differences in ICD-10 for vesicoureteral reflux and post-procedural, either acute or chronic, kidney failure. For general documentation requirements, the most significant changes related to documentation for diseases of genital urinary system include documentation of the severity or status of a disease, e.g. acute or chronic, as well as the site, etiology, and any secondary disease process. Provider documentation should clearly specify any cause and effect relationship between medical treatment and a genital urinary disorder, such as a post-catheterization urethral stricture. Documentation should specify whether a complication occurred intraoperatively or postoperatively and many codes require more specific documentation of the site, including laterality, right, left, or bilateral, for paired organs and the extremities. Now we begin Chapter 14, Diseases of the Genital Urinary System. For specific documentation requirements, we will now focus on some of the more frequently reported genital urinary diseases in home care that have different documentation requirements in ICD-10, including cystitis, hydronephrosis, urethral stricture, vesicoureteral reflux, and post-procedural acute or chronic kidney failure. For cystitis, as you know, cystitis, or inflammation of the bladder, is most often caused by a bacterial infection of the urinary tract. It may also result from a reaction to certain drugs, radiation therapy, irritants, such as a long-term use of a catheter, or as a complication of another illness. Documentation in the medical record needs to specify the type and cause of the cystitis and identify any infectious agent or organisms, such as E. coli. ICD-10 requires documentation of cystitis as with or without hematuria. As you see in ICD-9 versus ICD-10 terminology, we had in ICD-9 acute chronic interstitial, or other chronic cystitis. Well, now in ICD-10, we continue to have those three diagnoses, but all with or without hematuria is that now is now provided separately. Again, with cystitis, we must identify the type. Is it acute with or without hematuria? Is it chronic with or without hematuria? Is it due to irradiation with or without hematuria? Is it trigonitis with or without hematuria? or is an other specified type, again without or with hematuria. We need to use an additional code to identify any infectious agent. A note about hematuria, it's been found to be a far more important symptom in the diagnosis and treatment of renal diseases than previously thought when it is recurrent and persistent and diagnosed with several various glomerular diseases. Combination codes are available in ICD-10 to report the condition much more accurately than was possible in ICD-9. For hydronephrosis, hydronephrosis is a condition in which the kidney's urine collecting system becomes dilated, usually due to an underlying illness or medical condition. Distension of the kidney with urine is caused by the backward pressure placed on the kidney when the flow of urine is obstructed. Obstruction or blockage is the most frequent cause of hydronephrosis, but the condition may also be congenital, caused by trauma, neoplastic disease, calculi, inflammatory processes, or surgical procedures and documentation of etiology is essential for code assignment. We need to know why the hydronephrosis occurred. 
Obstruction can occur anywhere from the urethral meatus to the calcial infundibula, and the physiological effects depend on the level of obstruction, the extent of involvement, the patient's age at onset, or whether it's acute or chronic. Hydronephrosis can be unilateral, involving just one kidney, or bilateral, involving both, although surprisingly enough, ICD-10 does not require laterality for this condition. As you can see when we compare terminology in ICD-9 and 10, we had one code in ICD-9 for hydronephrosis. In ICD-10, we now have codes available for hydronephrosis with ureteral stricture, not elsewhere classified, hydronephrosis with renal and ureteral calculus obstruction, and unspecified hydronephrosis, other hydronephrosis, or pyonephrosis. For acquired hydronephrosis, we must identify the cause. Is it with infection? Is it with renal and ureteral calculus obstruction? Is it with ureteral stricture? Is it other specified hydronephrosis or unspecified hydronephrosis? For urethral stricture, Urethral strictures result from various causes and present a range of manifestations. Causes of urethral strictures include trauma, an adverse effect or complications from medical treatment, inflammatory or infectious processes, or malignancy. But most urethral strictures are the result of trauma to the perineum, such as a traumatic catheter placement or removal of a chronic and indwelling Foley catheter. Again, we see the differences between ICD-9 and ICD-10. In ICD-9, we had one code, urethral stricture due to unspecified infection, whereas in ICD-10, you can see there's a multitude of codes that we have available depending on the type of urethral stricture. Again, as we stated before, we must identify the cause of the urethral stricture. Is it post-infective, not elsewhere classified, post-procedural, post-traumatic, due to an other specified cause or due to an unspecified cause. We must identify the gender of the patient. Is it a male or female? Is it a male with post-infective, post-procedural, or post-traumatic? You must identify the site. Is the stricture at the anterior urethra? Is it at the bulbous urethra? Is it at the meatus, the membranous urethra, or is it unspecified? Now, if you have a female patient who has a post-traumatic stricture, you must identify the cause. Is it due to childbirth or another specified trauma? For vesicoureteral reflux, this is the abnormal flow of urine back up to the ureters. Vesicoureteral reflux can be unilateral or bilateral, and documentation of laterality is necessary for the most accurate code assignment in ICD-10. Vesicoureteral reflux can damage the kidneys, and when this occurs, it's referred to as reflux nephropathy. ICD-10 requires documentation indicating the presence or absence of damage to the kidneys caused by the reflux of urine. ICD-10 also captures the presence or absence of hydroureter. Vesicoureteral reflux with reflux nephropathy is not the same as reflux-associated pyelonephritis, and the two conditions are coded differently so the two conditions must be clearly differentiated in the documentation. When we compare terminology in ICD-9 and ICD-10, we had two codes in ICD-9, vesicoureteral reflux, unspecified or without reflux nephropathy, or vesicoureteral reflux with reflux nephropathy, unilateral. We now have codes available, whether it's unspecified, without reflux nephropathy, without hydroureter with reflux nephropathy, or with reflux nephropathy with hydroureter and unilateral. We must identify the type and presence of reflux. If it's with reflux nephropathy, is it with hydroureter, either bilateral, unilateral, or unspecified? Is it without hydroureter, either bilateral, unilateral, or unspecified? Is it without reflux nephropathy, or is it unspecified? For post-procedural acute or chronic kidney failure, an important note on complications. Official coding guideline 1B16 indicates that code assignment is based on the provider's documentation of the relationship between the condition and the care or procedure. The guideline extends to any complications of care, regardless of the chapter in which the code is located. 
It is important to note that not all conditions that occur during or following medical care or surgery are classified as complications. There must be a cause and effect relationship between the care provided and the condition and an indication in the documentation that it is a complication. Query the provider for clarification if the complication is not clearly documented. Postoperative acute renal failure is a serious complication resulting in prolonged acute care stays and high mortality. Key terms found in documentation for postprocedural, either acute or chronic kidney failure may include post-op chronic renal failure or post-op acute renal failure. Provider documentation should also list any type of kidney disease. For additional information on CKD, the stages of CKD are classified in ICD-10 based on severity. The severity of CKD is designated by stages 1 through 5, with stage 2 equating to mild CKD, stage 3 equating to moderate CKD, stage 4 equating to severe CKD. End-stage renal disease is assigned when the provider has documented end-stage renal disease. If both a stage of CKD and end-stage renal disease are documented, you would assign the end-stage renal disease only. For chronic kidney disease and kidney transplant status, patients who have undergone kidney transplants may still have some form of chronic kidney disease because the kidney transplant may not fully restore kidney function. Therefore, the presence of CKD alone does not constitute a transplant complication. We would assign the appropriate codes for the patient's stage of CKD and the kidney transplant status as per provider documentation. If a transplant complication, such as failure or rejection, or other transplant complication is documented, then that should be represented in code selection. If the documentation is unclear as to whether the patient has a complication of the transplant, you must query the provider. When you have CKD with other conditions, you know, patients with CKD may also suffer from other serious conditions, such as, most commonly, diabetes and hypertension. The sequencing of the CKD code in relationship to the codes for the other contributing conditions is based on coding conventions. ICD-10 continues to presume a cause and effect link between hypertension and CKD and classifies chronic kidney disease with hypertension as hypertensive chronic kidney disease. Now here's our chapter summary. The most important changes to genital urinary system chapter include Documentation requires that more detailed information on the diagnosis and treatment of these conditions. There are an increased number of combination codes that identify both the disorder and the common manifestation. For example, cystitis is now a combination code based on the type of cystitis and whether the patient has hematuria or not. The clinical terminology used to describe genital urinary disorders in ICD-10 has been updated to include advances in medical diagnoses and treatment for conditions. Our references for today's webinar include the ICD-10 Complete Official Draft Code Set, Optum 2014, the ICD-10 Clinical Documentation Improvement Desk Reference from Optum 2015, and the Home Health ICD-10 CM Documentation Trainer by Decision Health 2015. Thank you for joining us. For any questions regarding today's presentation, please contact either Susan Carmichael, our Chief Compliance Officer, at susan.carmichael at selectdata.com or myself, Elizabeth Clark, the Director of Education at elizabeth.clark at selectdata.com. Again, we thank you for joining us. We hope you found this webinar to be useful. Please feel free to contact us should you have any further questions. Thank you so much and have a great day.